What I want to demonstrate now is the method known as bench cleft grafting. Some people just call it cleft grafting. Um, anytime you see the word bench applied to a type of grafting, it indicates that the thing, the rootstock part that you're grafting onto is an unrooted cutting. And then the grafted, put together parts not only heal the graft, but also make roots at the same time. And so in this case, it's gonna be in the mist system. So I've got my cyan variety here, the variety of rose bush that I want. This one happens to be Colonial Days. It's a nice age to use. Uh, it's got a flower that's just now fading, uh, very much the same as if you were taking cutting. That's a good age of wood to use. It's still fairly young, six or seven weeks, but it's nicely firm. There's some wood in there. And what I want for this cyan is a, a, a leafless area at the bottom that I can work on. And you can certainly snap the prickles off if they're bothering you. That's a good thing to do. And then I want at least two leaves remaining above them. So uh, I'm going to cut that right here. So that's going to be my cyan piece. I want to keep that nice and damp at all times. And then I'm going to pick a Fortuniana rootstock cutting that is approximately the same diameter. Um, it's okay if the Fortuniana is just a bit thicker than the Scion, but I certainly don't want it any thinner than the Scion. It doesn't really matter where on the stem I join them up, it's more important that they be the same width. So I'm going to take that top leaf off. There's a bud right there. I'm going to cut just below that so I have a nice long inner node. Um, so I'm preparing this as I would a regular cutting, except I'm leaving this long extra strip at the top. So now I can take my grafting knife and I'm going to go right to the middle, come over where you can see that, right to the middle of that stem and I'm gonna make a cleft down the middle. It should split at least an inch, maybe a bit more. And at this point, I'm gonna to have to work fairly quickly. This is damp because I've spritzed it, but I don't have a lot of time to waste here. So on my cyan variety, I'm going to make a cut down one side much deeper than I do on my cuttings. I, I want this to go almost halfway through. And then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do another cut and they should join at the bottom to form a perfectly sharp point like that. So that's my cyan. Now I'm going to force that scion into the cleft in this rootstock. And I want it to go right down to the, the top of the scion wound. I don't want any uh, real uh, shoulder sticking out. There's a little bit sticking out there, that's probably okay. I want to line those up so the bark matches the whole way around. And then using either tape or a rubber band, I'm going to um, seal this. If you don't have the official grafting rubber, you can use a regular rubber band. You'll just have to unwrap it later because it won't rot as fast as this one will. And I'm, I'm stretching this rubber band almost to its limit of stretchability. So I'm putting probably a couple pounds of pressure on the cutting at all times and um, wrapping from bottom to top, overlapping the edges almost like shingles on a roof. So it'll be almost waterproof. When I get to the top, these are called the shoulders of the graft. I need to really seal that area so that water doesn't get in there. And I've got uh, not a lot of rubber band left, so I'm gonna hold a, a loop here. I'm gonna come around and put the, the end through that loop, pull it tight, and that's my finished graft. So um, now I have leaves on the top. There's the graft. I've got leaves on the base. I'm gonna wound this base just as I did for regular cuttings. I'm going to dip it in my rooting compound, give it at least five seconds, preferably ten or more. I have a wraparound label here that I've already made with today's date and the um, uh, name of the plant. And so I'm going to put that on the bottom of my cutting, stick that in the, in the soil. Uh, and that's now ready to go into the mist bed. And, and just as I would with cuttings, I'll spritz these every, every couple grafts to, to be sure they're staying fresh. I'll do another one here just to demonstrate. So I need enough room at the bottom to work on. So I'm, I'm taking that bottom leaf off. 
one nice thing about the variety colonial days is the leaves are quite far apart. If you're using a variety where the inner nodes are very short, you may have to have one with, with a bunch of leaves in order to get it long enough. So that, that's a very nice scion right there. It's nice and wet. If you ever let this wilt, um, no amount of misting will make it work later. It's, it's probably going to fail in that case. So I need a rootstock that that matches. That's uh, Oh, that's pretty good right there. That's a nice match. And I've got lots of leaves on this. I can take the bottom two off for rooting the cutting. I'll keep these three. I'll break off these two. So that's a nice Fortuniana cutting. With my grafting knife, I'll make my cleft right down the middle. And, and you can probably see, I. I don't have three hands, most people don't. So I tend to prop it against my sternum. That's a nice prop. There's my cut. Then I'm gonna make the cuts on my scion. You probably notice that I'm cutting back toward myself. If, if, if you mess up, you just redo it. Um, whatever your mother told you about never cutting toward yourself with a knife, if you're going to graft, it's not true. Because um, I've been teaching grafting now for going on 40 years, and I have yet to meet a person who can make a successful graft who cuts away from themselves if they were whittling. Maybe you can do that, but I've never met such a person. Good grafters always cut toward themselves. So there's the finished graft, and that just now needs to be wrapped up. This time I'll use the plastic grafting tape. And it also has a certain amount of stretchability. There is no uh, stickum on it. It's not gummed at all. It's just uh, stretchy plastic tape. And so again, I just kind of wrap the base to get it started. And then almost like shingles on a roof, I'm gonna wrap up over this. I wanna keep my scion and rootstock lined up nicely, bark to bark, um, and that'll allow it to heal together very well being very careful to seal those shoulders at the top and then just to increase the squeezing pressure I'm going to wrap back down and, and again I'm I'm pulling on this tape almost hard enough to break it you, you can't really see what I'm doing there but I'm really putting a couple pounds of pressure on it and then at the bottom hold a loop come around from the side what you're really doing is making a half hitch knot at the bottom so that one is finished I can wound the base of my cutting, dip it in my rooting hormone, I have my label ready to go, and I'll stick that one. So that's finished. These will go in the mist bed and exactly as would be true of just plain Fortuniana cuttings, they'll be in the mist at least three weeks. Normally I leave these a little longer. I like to leave them until the scions have actually set up some new growth. It doesn't have to be full grown, but that's an indication. If you see new growth coming actively out of the scion, that not only do you have roots at the bottom, but the graft union has healed. And then when that comes out of the mist, uh, we will leave them wrapped until the top has made a full growth flush and flowered. And at that point we will unwrap the graft. And it's, it's a finished plant at that point.